Hi there, this is John Kurakawa with a video on the etudes for the Ohio All-State Ensemble Auditions. This is a big video, but it includes a complete performance of the etudes on pages 17 and 34 of the Voxman Selected Studies, plus practice tips, tricks, and strategies for each etude. You can take what you need and leave the rest. The timestamps are down in the video description, so you can jump exactly to the portion you want. Also, if you find this video useful, please make sure to leave a like down below and hit the subscribe button. I read every single comment and love reading your feedback and answering your questions. Let's get started with a performance of the G minor etude on page 17. This etude has several challenges. It's marked allegro or fast, but I definitely recommend practicing slowly to start. The first thing I do is mark breaths. I'm not going to go through and recommend every single place you should breathe, but you're welcome to steal my breathing places. When practicing slowly, you might need to mark a few more breaths to get through, which you can eliminate later. The next thing I do is get used to the key. Make sure you can play the G minor scale smoothly. You don't have to be lightning fast, but you do have to be accurate. Make sure to mix it up with different articulations. Remember, keep your airspeed fast and your tongue action light. Next, let's talk about some things to look out for. After marking your breaths, the next thing I do is mark in all of the left hand C's. There are a ton of them in this piece. Measure two. Measure 20. Measure 30. Etc. Etc etc. Make sure to mark these so they don't take you by surprise. Whatever you do, don't slide your pinky, especially in a slur. It makes things difficult. There are two tricky sequences. The first starts at measure 19 and goes to measure 24. I'd practice this in two measure chunks, slowly with a metronome. I'd also start slurred. This way you can focus on your air and fingers without having to worry about the articulation. Like this. Then gradually increase the speed. I like to move in increments of three or four, 60, 63, 66, etc. When you can play these two measures smoothly slurred, add the articulation. Keep your tongue light, and remember, it's not necessarily about speed, but coordination. If you're having a difficult time getting your fingers and tongue to line up, make sure you're playing everything evenly when you slur. You can't line up your fingers and tongue if your fingers are not perfectly even. I find that often students are actually tonguing too rapidly, not too slowly as they often think. I'd recommend thinking of your tongue action as light, relaxed, 
and almost lazy. Lead with your fingers. If you're having a hard time lining things up, start slowly again and build it up, doing everything you can to avoid tension. A curious articulation occurs in measure 16. The accents under the slur should not be articulated, but expressed by emphasizing these accents with the breath under the slur, like this. The next passage that's a little tricky is in measures 32 and 34. Just like before, I tackle this one in small sections, this time one measure at a time. Just as before, practice with a metronome, preferably in six. Pick a tempo that is slow enough that you can play it easily without making any mistakes. I'd recommend using the right hand pinky for the B naturals. It makes these passages a bit easier for me. Try it and see if you like it. From there, you can speed up gradually as before, or you can try applying different rhythms, long-short, short-long, and other variations. If you want to be thorough, practice backwards, then forwards. You might need to start slowly on this one. It's pretty tricky. Measure 35 through 39, make sure to bring out the accents. Do these by vigorously emphasizing the beginning of each note with the air. Keep the tongue action light. Don't tongue harder, but use more air at the beginning of the note, combined with a light and quick tongue action. This will help avoid things getting too heavy. Avoid letting the jaw move when articulating. Keep the chin pulled flat and the embouchure poised. I would practice this passage the same way, one to two measures at a time, slurred and slowly with the metronome, gradually increasing speed. In measures 37 and 38, don't let the string of articulated and accented notes stress you out. Practice this one slowly and slurred, making sure your embouchure is poised and consistent. Your embouchure shouldn't be shifting or moving to accommodate the high notes or articulation. Make sure your jaw isn't moving when you tongue. Again, start slowly, start slurred, and always use the metronome. Make sure your air is fast and focused and that you're not clenching or loosening too much for the high E flat. I would definitely recommend the right hand E flat pinky for this note too, since it adds resonance and response. Finally, always practice with a metronome. Work to keep a steady tempo throughout. There's not a lot of dynamic indicators in here, but remember, a good rule for phrasing, when you go up, crescendo. When you go down, diminuendo. This is a chance to show some personality in your interpretation. Now, let's go to the next etude.
This etude is quite challenging. It's in a terrible key for slow legato playing, so this one will take a little brain work. Normally, I transpose this to the A clarinet for more artistic note connections, but remember etudes are designed to be challenging and make you better. First, let's make sure we're good with the E major scale. This one doesn't go very high, so two octaves should suffice. <laughs> Practice this slowly, working for a perfectly even scale with fast, constant air support for a smooth legato. Make sure you're using the right hand pinky for low E and B on the staff. No sliding here. Next, make sure you mark your breaths. Having breath marks in place equals good phrasing. Most of the phrases in this piece are four measures long, but at an andante tempo, or walking tempo, you may need extras. You can place breaths after long notes or before pickups. These are always ideal places to put breaths. Throughout, make sure to play real dotted eighth and sixteenth notes here. No swing or jazz sixteenths. Work for a healthy crescendo in measures five and six, and watch out for measure seven. Unless you have a left hand E flat key, which I do not, you're going to have to do a slide in measure 7. I personally choose to slide between the D-sharp and C-sharp. Typically, I find it's easier to slide my pinkies downwards rather than upwards. In measure 8, phrase to the second to last note. Crescendo to the F-sharp half note. This phrase structure happens a lot in this etude. I'd recommend this strategy of going to the second to last note throughout. In measure 10, make sure to take the B natural with the right hand pinky so the G sharp isn't a problem. Next, don't forget to use the side or chromatic F-sharp in measure 14 for a smooth slur to E-sharp and back to F-sharp. On B2, I'd revert to the normal F-sharp since you don't need to use the chromatic fingering here. Because it's mezzo forte, make sure your F-sharp isn't flat, especially if you're playing a bouffe R13. You can firm your embouchure slightly or vent your left hand C-sharp pinky. In measure 16, do the retard. I'd say exaggerate this one and the one in measure 28 so it's clear in your interpretation. The chromatic inside F sharp make a return in measure 20 again, so make sure it's not flat. In measure 24, Use the chromatic fingering for low B natural and phrase to the C double sharp, the second to last note again. There are several ways to interpret the turns in measures 31 and 32, but they should both be the same and they should both be rhythmic. A slight crescendo through each of these turns will give them direction and makes for good phrasing. My preference would be to interpret each one as an eighth note and four 32nd notes. I'll put it up on the screen. Another way you could play this is as a quintuplet. Use the same notes, but place five evenly distributed notes on the last beat of each measure. Five, 
finally, don't forget to use the chromatic fingering for the first low B in measure 36. Make sure you get maximum value out of each note in the triplets without dragging throughout. Keep your air fast for maximum legato, and make sure to place your fingers. No slapping here. Finally, as someone who has adjudicated the OMEA Allstate submissions, I'd recommend prioritizing notes, rhythm, intonation, tone, then musicality. Being musical is great, but not at the expense of good rhythm or sound. In fact, I would argue that's not good musicianship. Make sure to perform these as much as possible before recording. And if you can, don't try to record everything at once. Space it out if you can. If you've gotten this far, Thank you for watching. I'll look forward to seeing you all in the comments. We just passed 2,000 subscribers, and I have more content planned for the future. I was thinking of doing a DIY recording tips video. Would this interest you? If so, please let me know in the comments. In the meantime, take care, best of luck on your audition prep, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.